Hi everybody, Chris here. Welcome back. It's part three. Um, we took lots of breaks uh, on this uh, video series. Um, you always hear me say that. As uh, artists, especially watercolor artists, um, we have the good fortune of being able to take lots of breaks in between our um, our, our washes when we're doing um, our paintings and uh, and in general it's always great to take breaks when you're doing a uh, drawing or painting helps you to refresh you can actually uh, step back from things and then look at things you know when you come back and and before you get back into it and look at it and say oh you know I can maybe change this or change that or this is it needs to be a little darker this needs to be a little lighter uh, I might need to add some details over here I might need to add some details over there so in essence I, I'm always a big advocate of uh, taking breaks, so please do that. I just took a break, got some dinner. I have my decaf coffee next to me now, and I'm ready to go again for our third part. And now what we have is our pencil drawing complete, as you can see. So we have our pencil drawing complete, and we also have our first wash complete. And you can see the paper is really, really flat. I let it dry about 45 minutes. So now it's back to its original state. This is actually a, um, I'm trying to think if I have something close by that I can reach here. Um, this is a watercolor pad, which is an Arches uh, watercolor pad. It has the glued edge around it. So essentially these are uh, great um, watercolor paper pads. They come glued. Each piece of paper is, is glued in the pad and there's like maybe 25 pages per uh, block. They call them watercolor blocks. Um, if you haven't tried watercolor blocks, I definitely think you guys should at some point give them a try. They're great. What happens with the blocks is they're, the edges are all glued around the outside. So the edges are glued around the outside of the watercolor block and then when you paint and do let's say a nice good um, heavy wash of watercolor and paint, of course naturally the paper is going to fill up with water and buckle and you know you get those buckles and waves in your paper but if you let it dry for about half an hour 45 minutes you'll notice that the paper goes back to perfectly flat and that's a great thing so um, you can also take regular uh, regular watercolor paper and tape it down to a board and get the same effect but the watercolor blocks are actually great because they're glued on the outside edges really tightly so that your watercolor paper will go back to that nice perfectly flat um, position once it's completely dry and then when you go back now and we start painting we're going to be painting on perfectly beautifully flat paper which gives us uh, no problem as far as um, uh, putting on our paints and getting everything nice and accurate and looking good all right so here in this video you might hear me talk a little less a little more uh, my regular followers you probably are used to me chatting quite a bit so I'll try to keep everybody aware of what I'm doing as much as I can while I work here. Um, okay, so now we're going with our second glazing. We're going with the medium, medium to darks. Now, I've got a uh, painting across from me from a book I have. It's a copyright issue, otherwise I would show the painting. So um, it's someone else's artwork, and uh, I don't want to like, you know, uh, take their take their painting and put it on uh, the internet. So here we have a scene, winter scene, uh, sunset, it's the, the time is sunset now, so you have the house, it's sunset, it's beautiful, it's a winter day, this is all snow in the um, foreground here, so there's all snow on the ground, snow on the roof here on this house too as well, so let's start painting that. So here, you're going to see I'm going to paint with less water now. Our first washes, you remember, were very watery. So this is left over from our first washes. You see how watery that is? That's a lot of water. Now we're going to we're going to clean up our palette. We may not use this section over here of this palette right now but we'll clean the palette up anyway then we'll go up to this top section of the palette and you can see now we're going with thicker 
um, thicker paint, less water. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue. I'm looking over French ultramarine blue. So now we're getting into the my my normal palette. If you're not sure about my colors and you're new to the um, my website, you just look up uh, Chris Petri my palette, and I describe to you in detail my colors, what I use, and essentially I use the same colors most often. 90% of the time I'm using this palette with all these same colors. So now we're just going out with our blues, cobalt, French ultramarine, cerulean, cerulean, cobalt, French ultramarine. And that's really, looking at that painting across from me, that's really what we're really looking at. And there might be a little bit of some ivory black and some Payne's gray. So I'll also put on some Payne's gray and ivory black onto the palette. So that's that's basically what we're working with now. This is a, you know as far as colors go, this painting is pretty pretty uh, straightforward. You know the first wash was the yellows and then a the little bit of blue, cerulean blue, with the uh, cadmium yellow and cadmium lemon yellow. And now we're going to work into our darker blues here. And again, you'll try this, you'll paint this maybe two, three, four, five, ten times, as many times as you want. Maybe you don't like snow and cooler landscape type paintings or sunset paintings, and you might not paint this ever again, but you might try it once or whatever. No big deal. We're just having fun here. So basically, now that we're already getting into the darker darks in this painting, we're just, we're constantly looking back at our, I'm looking back at my photograph ac across from me, just to make sure I'm seeing the, the tonal values that I'm looking to capture here. I'm going to try to leave, leave what I need to leave uh, light. There's some orange color in the windows here, like some bright orangey colors, like for the light light of the uh, interior of the building. So let's say there's some lights on inside this house, and people are in there, and they're having dinner, or they're, they're relaxing for the evening. I want to leave some nice uh, light color paper there so I can put in some orange light um, as we go. And sometimes it's fun, too, just to create little stories in your mind as you go. You know, you just create a little story. Maybe it's around the holidays and people are getting together and having dinner and enjoying a, a nice evening. And it's snow outside and snow on the ground here. And we're painting some snowy effects here on the foreground. So we're going to try to follow the lines of the ground. We put those pencil lines in before and that helps us because now we remember, oh, that's right. The ground is kind of you know, sweep, sweeping downwards towards this nice creek at the bottom. And then we have the creek at the bottom, and I noticed there's no real darks in that water, so the water is actually very light because it's re because it's actually reflecting the sky. So since this creek here is reflecting the sky, we're going to leave it yellow. We're not going to put any blue paint in there. And then we're going to continue on here and just con And I'm putting in a little bit of uh, darks here, the uh, Payne's Gray and Ivory Black, just maybe a little bit here and there. Then over here, I'm going to go into quite a bit of a, there's a darker section over here. So I'm going to use some of the Ivory Black and uh, Payne's Gray, and then a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue. And we'll try to divide this up a little bit so that we see that little bit of the change in the mountain here. So let's say that's one section and then we can maybe make this a little lighter back here. And then when you do this painting you can try it maybe several times and come up with different ideas
maybe pretend that it's maybe one painting can be a little lighter one can be a little darker so you can change around the the tonal values the lights and the darks to, to make it maybe lighter out or darker out maybe more towards sunset or, or maybe more light in the so I'm just trying to look at the um, painting across from me in the photograph and move a little bit of tissue maybe sometimes you want to blot out a little bit of paint you could use a tissue and just blot out some paint here and there okay I'm noticing it's a little darker down here by the I, I actually um, I put a little bit of uh, purple in there maybe I'll use some purple so let me some of uh, French ultra um, some ultramarine violet so since I'm using a little bit of ultramarine violet I want to add that up into the sky a little bit and a little bit around the uh, snow areas here so if for some reason you like to add a different color that maybe is not in a, in a photograph you're looking at or a painting you're looking at and you're copying you know you're an artist you have the liberty you can change things around add things that aren't there and again we're using lots of blue cobalt cerulean French ultramarine Again, using that flow upwards, the hill is going up, so the brush strokes go up. That helps a lot when you're painting. If you kind of think of your brush as going with the flow of things, it helps to put that kind of flow and sway upwards for the hill there. And then you can level off the hill by turning the stroke the other way. And making it more flat, change the colors around a little bit. So we'll go with a little more there, like that. Okay, now you can see we're really, we have some nice medium to dark tonal values here. And that's what we were looking for. We went with our first wash, of course, was the really light colors of the sky and the foreground. And now we're going into our middle to middle darks. So I'm trying to fill in some some darks here, and things are. coming along nicely we so as you can see we really um, we've come a long way in this painting here so far we're gonna go with a little darker tonal values here and there we'll try to get some more maybe some of that darker darks here and this is the fun part you as you go you can As you work, you, you take your time. There's no rush. With watercolor, you can take your time, feel things out. We'll take another break in a little while just to uh, refresh, take a break. Because sometimes if we work too much for a long period of time, our concentration starts to falter, and then we start to maybe miss things and have problems. So let's... Let's be uh, careful and we'll take a break in just a few minutes. We'll, I'm getting to that point where I can kind of feel it. I kind of feel like I'm already starting to, my concentration's going just a little bit. So it's going to be good for me too. I'll take a break now. And this looks like a good spot. We'll maybe, uh, let's see what time we have here. Okay, we'll be.